hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel so today i am going to talk about uh, one of the most important techniques that you should use or that you will need uh, in data science or machine learning applications that is k-fold cross validation so basically this k-fold cross validation is a method that uh, we we are using to our uh, to validate our data set uh, in a situation that we don't have any test observations so let's uh, this k can be any value so i will i am going to explain the, this k for cross validation uh, using the value of k as 10 so let's say you are going to do a 10 for cross validation that means uh, first you are going to separate your data set into 10 equal portions after that you are going to choose uh, one portion as your uh, test data that means you are going to choose the data that belongs to one portion as as the test data and the data belongs to other nine portions as the training data so after that you are going to apply uh, any machine learning technique uh, for the training data after that you are going to uh, calculate the uh, uh, test error rate using the test data uh, after doing that you are going to repeat this for 10 times if it is 10 for cross validation so uh, so at the end of the day what you are going to do is you are going to average your test error rate by uh, simply taking the average of uh, those 10 uh, test error rates okay so to do this uh, first you need to have this uh, mass function or the mass package because I am going to use this LDA and QDA functions so first you need to import this mass function to your R studio after that I am going to use this admission uh, text file I am I will put the link uh, to access this data file in my video description so that you can use this data set, set uh, in later so then I'm going to use this str function uh, to just check uh, the, uh, how the data looks like. So here uh, my main concentration is about these first three uh, variables GPA, GMAT and group. Uh, since I'm going to fit a LDA and a QDA, my response variable should be a categorical variable. So my plan is to put this group as my categorical, uh, my response variable and GPA and GMAT as my predictor variables. But here you can see this group uh, is defined as an integer variable. So now I'm going, uh, I need to uh, convert this group to a categorical variable. So to do that, I'm going to use this factor function. I'm going to convert this group function uh, to uh, I'm going to convert this group variable to a uh, to a factor variable and I'm going to store it uh, using the same name so in order to do that I'm going to run this code so now if you run this str uh, admission fun, uh, code now you will see now uh, the variable uh, variable type of group has changed to factor it has three levels one two and three okay so after that i'm going to run this k fold cross validation so as i told you earlier i'm going to run test uh, 10 fold cross validation so to do that uh, first i need to uh, separate my data set into 10 equal portions uh, to, to do that I am going to this cut function where I am going to break this sequence uh, from 1 to number of rows in this data file into k equal portions using uh, this cut function I am going to name that uh, new variable as false so if you uh, run this false you will see uh, the data set has uh, divided into 10 portions so that uh, I can use this uh, false function to get my k for cross validation and after that uh, I'm going to use this function cv.qda 
uh, which I built uh, in order to uh, generate this a uh, careful consolidation I'm going to use this s apply function uh, for for each value of k but if you want you can do the same thing using a for loop as well but uh, since uh, this s apply is computationally efficient then for loop I'm going to use this s apply function so inside this s apply function I'm going to I have created this test ID vector basically this text id vector uh, stores the uh, rows where rows of the uh, test observations so to do that i am going to use this which function so as an example here uh, i'm first i'm going to use the value of k as one here the value of k is as one so in that case here this uh, false will be equal to one that means uh, the all the observations where this false equals to one that means uh, the rows which correspond to these observations will consider as uh, test ID okay and all other observations all this all the other observations will consider as my training observation so I'm going to fit my model using this training data and then after after that I'm going to evaluate my model using this test data okay so I'm going to store this test ID using this switch function then I'm going to obtain the test observations of this admission file using this test ID like this and the all the observations which not belongs to this test ID or, or in other words all the rows which not uh, belongs to this test ID are considered as training observations to denote that I use this negative sign okay all right so next I am going to fit this uh, quantity discriminant and uh, analysis uh, model or QDA model using this QDA function so here this group means my response variable and GPA and GMAT as my, uh, are my predictor variables and I'm going to fit uh, this model using the training data then after that I'm going to predict the observations or I'm going to calculate the test error rate for the test uh, observations so to do that first time I need to predict uh, uh, the observations based on the test data using this predict function after that I'm going to calculate the overall test error rate using this cv.test.qda uh, vector so here basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to denote whether uh, uh, whether this QDA has correctly classified a test observation or not then after that I'm going to take the average okay so this step this uh, steps you can repeat it uh, repeat for k times then after that you can get uh, the cross-sidation error for all those k steps since here my k value is 10 I will get uh, test error rates uh, of 10 times okay so if I run this code and if you see this cv.qda over here you will see there are 10 test error rates because I'm I have run um, the 10 fold cross-sidation so to get an estimate of this test error rate I'm going to calculate the average of this all uh, test error rate to, to find the average I'm going to use this mean function so the average is 0 0.0597 okay so the uh, the main advantage of this uh, uh, k for consolidation is you can do, uh, do the same procedure for for a different method also then you can compare uh, the average consolidation error to find the best model okay so so in this example I am going to run uh, LDA also for this data set then I am going to calculate uh, the mean consolidation error rate uh, average consolidation error rate for LDA as well then I am going to compare the results okay so in this LDA also you have to do the same thing uh, the only difference is uh, instead of 
QDA, you need to run an LDA here. Okay. After that, uh, you have to calculate uh, the test error rate using this PDIC function and you have to then average the values. Okay. So I'm going to run this code. And then I'm going to calculate the average cost citation error rate, which is equal to 0 0.1306. So now you can see uh, the average cost citation error rate for QDA is smaller compared to average cost citation error rate that you obtain for LDA. So based on this uh, K4 cost citation or using this 10 fold cost citation, you can say that QDA is a best method uh, for this data set. Okay. All right, so that is it for K4 consolidation. So if you think this video is uh, useful to you, uh, please put a like on my video. And if you want to see more videos like this in future, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.